Weavers, tailors and cats. Three little devils that never got fat. This is Donegal, on the northwest coast of Ireland. Rugged, remote, beautiful. These mountains by the sea were the final stronghold of the earls of Tirconnell and Tyrone. Long ago, these hills rang with the shouts of warriors, the tramp of armoured feet. The earls are gone now, the battles are over, but every rock and every tree and every face carries the legacy of the earls a proud and independent people. The old traditions still live on. The hardy mountain black-faced sheep still graze quietly on the hillsides. And the age-old tradition of spinning and weaving continues almost unchanged. It's a hard county. The Atlantic is not always peaceful. And the people have had to challenge the sea and the land to survive. Most of the weavers live in and around the town of Ardra and have done for centuries. It was here that they held the fairs at which they sold their beautiful Donegal tweeds. Our best painters have come here to capture these colours, these contrasts. But long before them, the weavers had seen, appreciated and blended the yellows, browns, greys, greens and blues into the living artistry of finely woven cloth. Men like the three McNeilis brothers who live here at Sandfield. Connell and Jimmy do the weaving, and John looks after the house and the garden. None of them has ever married. John enjoys his life. It's hard work, but it's a way of living that many a city dweller would envy. He has clean air, beautiful countryside, an affinity with nature, and all living things. The most important of the living things is grass. Healthy grass means hay for the cows, and cows mean milk and butter, meat and leather, and money in the bank. In Donegal, the average holding is small, but the Donegal farmer has learned the art of intense cultivation of every square yard of soil. Every little corner of arable land must pay its way by growing a crop or feeding a calf or raising a clutch of chickens. John is an expert in the art of milking a cow. Make friends with the cow. If the cow is restless, talk to her. Give her a reassuring pat and make sure she doesn't go hungry. It's the same principle as fertilizing the fields. Feed the cows well and you get good milk and contented cows.
This proud gentleman has a harem of his own at McNeilis's, and they too must be fed, and fed well, if the McNeilis's are to have a constant supply of eggs for hearty breakfasts and currant cakes. Once again, the self-sufficiency of the Donegal smallholder. The leftovers from the kitchen table make the main course for the farmyard. You monkey, you polly, you wouldn't take your drink. No, you wouldn't take your drink, you wouldn't. No. Polly wouldn't take no drink. Now, hey, these are pretty fresh, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Newly laid eggs. Jimmy and Connell concentrate on the weaving. They work hard very often a 12-hour day in their newly built weaving shed. All of their work is contracted to McGee's Tweed Factory in Donegal Town. Many people believe if it were not for McGee's, the old tradition of weaving might easily die out in this part of Donegal. The brothers will shortly move into their new house. They're happy about that. While thatched houses have a lovely tourist charm, they do lack many of the facilities tourists take for granted. Connell has to start work today by adding a new length of warp to his loom. Warp are the threads that run down the length of the cloth. Threading a loom is a lengthy and tedious business. An average piece of warp has 1,000 separate threads. Finer cloth demands up to 1,600. Each single thread has to be positioned through four sets of eyes. It's like threading a needle. Well, four needles. One thousand times. Weaving is an ancient craft, and it's a tribute to the men who designed looms that they have changed very little in the hundreds of years since men first wove cloth on them. At its simplest, weaving means passing threads through other threads at right angles. The first weavers operated on the same principle as darning a sock pass the needle over one thread, under the next, over the next, and so on. The threads in cloth are called either warp or weft. Warp threads run down the length of the cloth, and the weft threads run across the width of the cloth. Weaving became mechanized when someone discovered that you could lift selected warp threads by passing each thread through an eye in a wooden frame, which they called a heddle. The heddles are raised by foot pedals. Now the weft could be shot across like a shell from a gun as the different heddles raised and lowered different selections of threads. The invention of this system made it possible to vary the patterns in the tweed. Meanwhile, John gets on with his chores around the farm. He makes butter in the dash churn, that salty country butter I loved as a child. Very few young people have ever tasted it, I suppose. Connell is putting a roll of weft into the shuttle. Years ago, the weavers themselves had to roll the weft onto bobbins and make up the warp too. Nowadays, it's all done by machine at the factory and the warp and weft are delivered to the weavers ready for use on the loom. Jimmy and Connell have been weaving for the past 25 years. There wasn't in fact a tradition of weaving in the family at all. The brothers turned to the cloth in the 50s when work was scarce in these parts. In bygone days, 
Special fair days were held in Ardra at which the weavers sold their wares. But nowadays, the MacNeilises market their tweed through McGee's of Donegal, a thriving firm which has now almost a hundred weavers like the MacNeilises on their books. Traditionally, weavers are excellent step dancers, easily understood when you see the intricate coordination of hand and foot they learn on the loom. One of the disadvantages of weaving is that the business is so noisy and demands such concentration that conversation is impossible in the shed. It's hard physical work too. One of the sad things is that when Jimmy and Connell finish with the weaving altogether, there will be no one to take it up. Over the years, they've trained some apprentices, but none of them could stick the long hours, the hard work, and the total concentration needed. John McNeilis remembers his mother spinning yarn. All the women did in those days. Strangely though, they always bought their cloth in the McNeilis family. There were seven children, two girls and five boys. They're scattered now like so many other families from this county. England and America provided work when there was none at home, so they left. No doubt believing they would return someday but John and Connell and Jimmy are still alone on the family's small farm. There's no one for John to teach. His great breadth of knowledge will die with him. This is not the tragedy that it might appear, because in his own life, he has achieved that diversity of function that makes for a depth of understanding in a man. And his mind is rich with memories the spinning wheel in the kitchen, the great pots by the turf fire where the newly spun yarn was being dyed, great cauldrons of colour. And the colours came from the land itself, from the flowers of the gorse, from the bark of the trees, from pools of bog water, from lichens growing on the rocks. One of the lichens, called crottle, is still in use, but most of the dyes nowadays are synthetics from the chemical factories. But the colors are still as beautiful as ever. Someday, the small weaving sheds will disappear and be replaced by the large central factory where microprocessors and computers will organize and supervise the production of stereotyped cloths. And the men who operate them will long for a way of life in which every facet of their personalities can be developed. There are no demarcation disputes in the weaving sheds of Ardra. Mustn't that smell beautiful? Another well-made currant cake.
It seems a sacrilege to slice through this beautifully woven cloth. But no artist or craftsman could possibly survive without the pain of parting with his creations. The cloth is woven in 75 metre lengths. Connell and Jimmy each produce about 150 metres of cloth every week, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on how complicated the pattern is. There are four basic patterns, plain, herringbone, twill and barleycorn. When the cloth reaches the factory, it is washed in the soft, peaty water from the River Esk, which flows down from the Blue Stack Mountains. It is then dried and fully shrunk. Now it is ready for export to the fashion houses and a thousand boutiques all over the world. Wool is an extraordinary material. It's soft, smooth, pliable, warm. Yet its surface is covered with microscopic scales which help the fibres to cling together so that they can be spun together into a thread. Come on, boys! Done already! Where will this piece of herringbone finish up? In a man's sports jacket in West Germany? A lady's suit in Stockholm? An overcoat in Tokyo? Who knows? But to more urgent matters. Weaving is an absorbing craft and you don't realise how hungry you are until you stop. John knows this, and always makes sure to put on the table a dinner where quantity is just as important as quality. Cool. And when it comes to quality, where could you find a better taste than newly dug potatoes from the earth, running with salty butter straight from the churn? You need to go out and give the calves our drinks. Yeah, in the evening, sure. <laughs> so you will. You wouldn't take it this morning. Yeah. Isabella was here long enough. What do you wash on here? Nothing down the kitchen. See you in the morning. Magnaluses haven't time for many hobbies, but when they were younger, they all played a lot of football, although none of them ever made it onto the local Ardra team. They still enjoy kicking a ball about occasionally with their neighbours' children. Soon, though, it's back to work for the three brothers. For John, it means gathering food for the next meal. He's very proud of his garden, and rightly so, because he has as varied a supply of vegetables as you could find anywhere. The sandy soil by the sea is a hungry soil and needs plenty of manure, but it warms quickly in spring and grows wonderful potatoes and rhubarb, cabbages and lettuces. Strawberries too. You see this bunch of charmers I'm looking at? I grew them from one small piece like, something like that now. Just one single root. Well now, here we don't value them so much. But uh, during the summer months when the visitors come here, they ask you to send them for the 17th of March or St. Patrick's Day. And most people took seed from them. And as far as I know, one girl has them grown now in Holland. And uh, she wrote some time there past before the postal strike and she said there was nothing she cherished more than the bunch of shamrocks from Ireland. Even in this idyllic paradise, there are deadlines to be met. Once or twice a week, a van arrives from McGee's to collect the tweed and replace the empty warp beams. Although McGee's first went into business in Donegal in 1866, 
It wasn't until the 1930s that Mr. Robert Temple came to an arrangement with the weavers, guaranteeing them constant employment. In this way, he was able to ensure continuity of supplies, and more important still, continuity of patterns and colours to eager customers. Different breeds of sheep produce different types of wool. The wool of the Donegal blackface sheep contains long fibres of kemp, nowadays considered too coarse on its own for cloth, but very valuable for carpet making. The wool used for tweed is a blend of Donegal blackface, down, cheviot and Australian merino breeds. Hello, Eddie. Did you have a hit today with you? He's well. Have a lonely day. Oh, yeah. Hello, Joe. Yeah. Hi. Hey, you've plenty of stuff made today. Plenty of stuff, Eddie. Yeah, oh, boys, hey. Yeah, Very good, eh? Oh, I'm getting well on. I will have a few. Oh, well. You have many more to go, Eddie? Uh, three or four to go to on the way home now. You haven't to go to Dolan. That's good. Well, it. is the weather going to improve you? Did you go to the bog yet? Huh? Did you go to the bog? Oh, I have the turf cut now. Mm. I suppose you could be going to vote tomorrow. Well, I think we'll bloody make it. Right. Benny's yeah. for Europe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's a good man for Europe. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 Well, all the best, boys, now. Cheers, Eddie. Good luck, Eddie. Good, good, good luck, Eddie. John has been making butter so long now that he doesn't realise how skillful he is. But a modern city housewife would be completely lost if you handed her a few gallons of milk and asked for butter. When the churning is over and the butter collected, it has to be well washed. Then the salt, not too much, not too little, mix it in thoroughly. For nothing tastes worse than butter without salt, except maybe hot milk, or a soft-boiled egg. Now, a few more pats to put it in shape, and there you are. Put that on the cake we made earlier, and you wouldn't call the king your uncle. So the skill and the traditions and the lifestyle of the Magnetuses will die, inevitably. But men have always made things of beauty, and they always will. The creations will be different. Is there really all that much difference between the weaving of cloth and the building of a spacecraft? We are different from all other animals and from machines because of our imagination our creativity, our vision of how things might be. What we may lose is our closeness to nature, our link with the earth, and the range of the human spirit. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, so under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended on the hell authority. He arose again from the dead. I ascend into heaven. This is the right hand of God. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and day our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and day our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, all of thy name, the kingdom come, and do our mercy. The Lord is the Lord, and the Lord forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not under temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the divine assistance always remain with us, and may our souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.